My name is Dennis Agri. I am the founder and overseer for Christian Revival Church Association. Uh, now that I want to serve the Lord, I want to disciple people, I want to do the same thing this missionary fellow is doing with me, I want to do that for other people. So there was a struggle of me after high school, go to the Bible college because I want to learn more about Jesus, I want to teach people. But then my father had a different plan for me. Uh, physically, I'm strong. So he thought I could, after high school, he wants me to go to this very prestigious uh, college, uh, an agriculture college, so I can be an agriculturalist and come and take care of the farm. Uh, but then, the same day they were giving the entrance for the both colleges, the university and um, the Bible college and the and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the agriculture college, it was the same day. So I didn't tell him, but I went, I took the Bible college entrance. So I come back and he said, how was the entrance? It was really good. I said, but I didn't go to the Cartington University College. I took the entrance for the African Bible College. And he make a joke like, oh, so you want to be a priest? And I said, no, I just want to know more about God. He said, well, I don't count on my support. And I'm not going to give you money to go to a Bible college. Blessedly, I passed the entrance, so I went to the Bible college, and then God provided a scholarship, a work scholarship. I used to work 18 hours a week on the campus to be able to pay my tuition, and I went through college. Then, during that time, uh, Campus Crusade was having this uh, um, evangelism event that was going on all, all around the world. So I went to that program, to that conference, and then I saw people from the, on the street in the marketplace. They were using the four spiritual laws and just sharing with people. And then again, I knew, I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. So right after I graduated from, from, from college, I signed up with Campus Crusade. Uh, and then I became a full-time staff working with university students. And in fact, while I was on the campus, I was able to see my fourth generation uh, of disciples. Uh, then then it, it was really great. I had a great time. But while, while, while we're doing that, working with the university students, uh, with Crusade, war broke up into Liberia. It is a war that has made headlines here because American lives and property are in danger. But what's really happening in Liberia? Tonight, a unique behind the scenes look at rebel forces in battle and their leader as we focus on Liberia's brutal civil war. I was living in this two bedroom apartment and then there were about 26 students that took refuge in my two bedroom apartment. And we were locked into this two bedroom apartment for a whole week because we were caught in the crossfire. There were the government troops on the other side, the, the rebels that were fighting against the government were on the other side. So we're in the middle of, of, of just bullet flying day and night. So we're stuck into the, in this apartment. There was no food. In fact, that we, 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 went, we ran out of water. And I remember vividly one of the guys, really promising guy. In fact, this fellow, he, he was so active. He, he, he was just sharing the word of God, the, 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 the gospel as a way of life. And then he said, you know, we can decide to stay in here and die of test, or I can try to go out there and get water. He crawled on his belly, and then he opened the door. He went, there was a well right next door where we were living. And then he dipped the, 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 the bucket into the well and he brought it, just a bucket of water. And that's 26 of us, everybody crumbling to get just a sip of that water because we're so thirsty. In the excitement, he went to the window to spy and a bullet flew from the window and just caught him in the neck. Before we looked, he, he was gone, he died. And I said, you know what, we can't stay in here. My parents are up country, up in Lofa, we're all gonna go. If we just go out there, they're gonna kill us, let them just kill us. So we crawl and we make our way between the, re the, re the rebels, the, the, these guys are fighting the government. And we made our way all the way up. The plan was we would go up because now the war has come to Morovia. My parents are there and we will be with them. It took us a week of walking day and night to get to Konya, place up in North Lofa. When we got there, the town was so quiet. There was nobody around. And then and I, I was puzzled, why is this town so quiet? Then I saw my mother from a distance coming towards me. 
And I went and I grabbed her and I hugged her and we were crying because by this time we'd been away from each other almost a year. Because the war was up on our side, we were in the city. There was nobody knew what was going on. And then she held me back, she said, the care of father. I said, why? And I, so the story was, my father was a medical doctor. So he'd been treating these wounded soldiers day and night. So the fourth night he was tired and he needed some rest. So he told those that were working with him, when they bring wounded soldiers, please treat them. I need to go and rest. So he went to, to bed, took his bag, went to bed to rest. And then it didn't even take less than two hours, according to her, these fighters came by with a pickup full of wounded soldiers again. And they were asking for him, where's Mr. Agri? And those that were working with him, the nurses said, well, he's going to rest. The, the old man is tired, he went to rest. He'll be coming back soon. And the commander who was just a teenager, like 18 years old, said, well, if he's going to bed and we are fighting, go and put him to sleep. So my mom told me that, I said, but then what are you doing here? Everybody is gone, so we, we, we can't stay here. So the, the others went into Guinea. So I said, but we're going to Sierra Leone. We're going all the way up to the border and crossing to Sierra Leone. So cool with us. He said, no, your other brothers and sisters are in the Guinea area and I know where they are. I'm going to go. And I said, I was just waiting because I knew somehow you were going to come here. So that day we parted ways. She went towards Guinea and all these students that were with me, we went across the border. Even to cross the border was so difficult because the border was closed. We had to smuggle our way out. Then I spent one month in Sierra Leone and then I made my way to Nigeria where Great Commission, now uh, Campus Crusade Head Office of West Africa was. Spent some time there. Uh, there then there will be ceasefire. We will come back into the country, try to look for those who are ministering to. The war will break up, we will run out again. And finally, in that process, God provided a way for me to go to the U.S. to go to school. So I got admitted at the Peace Independent School, Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama.